Good afternoon, traders and investors. Welcome to this Tuesday, September 12th edition of The Closing Print. Joel Alconnen here will be joined shortly by Christian Fromhertz. As we uh, go through the last 30 minutes of this rocky trading session, taking a look at the S&P 500 index futures, we're down 28 and three quarters handles at 45, 10.75. Uh, we are coming just off the low of the day, 07 and a quarter. Uh, that comes in nicely, a point and a half below that Globex low from yesterday. At 0875, so we're trying to get a little bounce here, currently back at 4511. We'll see if that low is good enough to hold up for the remainder of the trading session. On the upside here, we had a nice move around 130, 145. It took us uh, to a new high on the session, but uh, missed uh, going unchanged by two ticks. Uh, so that closing price of 45.39.50 uh, from yesterday, just under uh, the high from yesterday, turning out to be a pretty good number here in Tuesday session. Uh, the buck is off the lows of the session. Now up 14 points at 104.68. The bonds have turned things around. Now up 11.30 seconds. Trading range over the last two days ahead of the uh, big announcement tomorrow with the CPI data. Crude having a good day, up a buck sixty-seven at eighty-eight ninety-six. We did sneak into the eighty-nine dollar handle. Uh, just trading just under eighty-nine now. I haven't been up this area in the crude market uh, since uh, late October of two thousand twenty-two. Gold took out support at 19.40, down 10.90 on the day, seven bucks off the low of the session. That's trading in 1936.30. Silver in the red too, but not as much on a percentage basis. A silver down fractionally here, only a couple pennies at 23.35. And Bitcoin, Bitcoin holding on to those gains, overnight gains. Uh, off the highs of the session, we were up as much as $1,500 at one point when uh, the futures traded $26,685. But uh, you know, pulled back $500 off that level and uh, currently trading up $1,155 at $26,000. 185. So there's a look at some of your commodity futures. And let's try identify the culprits in today's session. Well, I think your primary culprit has to be Oracle here. Uh, let's get the uh, pre-market trading and after hours trading here to better illustrate the points. Uh, the pair of lows at the 112 or the trio of lows at the 112 area. Well, they really didn't do much for the issue. You can see those air, those lows were just in this area. Uh, what we were looking for beyond that was a gap fill. Now it went far and beyond that the gap fill. You only needed to get to uh, the top of the range from June 9th, and that came in at 110. 16, a low on the session, uh, quite a bit below that. Uh, it comes in at 107.30. Just looking to see what the low on that gap up range day was 107.41. So a reset to last quarter's earnings. I will note that it is uh, Oracle three bucks off the low of the session. And even though it's down nearly 13%, that's $6.26. It is down just about mid range on the session. We've had a six point range from 107.30 to 113.30. Uh, so if we can hold 110.30 here, uh, just a short-term number for Oracle heading into the close. But uh, that move has um, uh, spilled over into some of the other tech sector. And uh, Apple uh, not happy with the launch, as uh, Triple D was stating this morning. Nothing new there. Uh, Apple down 375, 373 at 175.63. Uh, still off the lows from last week at 173.54. Microsoft uh, following suit here. Google in the red too that's dealing with some lawsuits. Amazon giving some back after its big day. And NVIDIA 
Uh, once again, uh, this could be the third down day in a row here. Tried to muster a rally, but ran out of steam in the mid-256 handle. And Tesla, it was humming. It got as much as uh, as high as 270.38, but we had an intraday uh, downgrade. So Lalo G asked a question, why are banks running higher today? And uh, he's referring to JP Morgan here trading in the green and uh, Morgan Stanley trading in the green. I don't know if it's uh, anything to do with uh, the capital requirements. I don't think that's been uh, changed. But uh, what I did, what I do see uh, for the catalyst uh, in the banking sector was uh, some upgrades to JP Morgan. Uh, those came from RBC Capital. It raised its uh, price target to 158 and Morgan Stanley also bumped its price target on JP Morgan to 179 so a little bit of rotation here out of the tech sector into the banking sector we'll see if this spilled over to the KRE at all uh, KRE up uh, fractionally uh, but that's what you're looking at. I think it's just some of the upgrades. I think a little bit of rotation uh, into the bank stocks uh, is what you're seeing today. So that's the catalyst that I saw too. Uh, GS, uh, of course, Goldman Sachs. You have to mention Goldman Sachs here. Uh, that's getting off the 320 area. That's having a good day too, up 667. Not really see it did have a little gap to fill at 334.86. It did that by about right around 50 cents when you went to 335.28 uh, on the session. Now backing off uh, at the 331 and a quarter. So your your symbol of strength, your sign of strength in the market has been. Uh, the financials. Uh, let's take a look at some other stocks before we bring in uh, a, a Christian Fromhertz, who has some interesting stocks on his radar today. Of course, we did cover the uh, the Oracle. No love today. Uh, Florida, Florida, trying to bottom fish in AAP. I don't sure how that's working out. Down another four eighty nine, well below the COVID lows. So. Bad day on the weekly, monthly, daily, whatever way you look at it. Uh, perhaps not the day yet to try and pick a bottom in AAP, Advanced Auto Parts. Look at O'Reilly. O'Reilly, uh, the best at breed, is taking a hit too. So if O'Reilly's not going to go, Advanced Auto Parts not going to go. And what else is there? There's O'Reilly, there's Advanced Auto Parts, and I know there's one more just um, just slipping my mind here. AAP, O'Reilly, and you guys can help me out with the third one. SAPs are just, uh, but they're here. Uh, they're trying to bounce, trying to put that low in, make that a good low at 07 and a quarter here as we head into the final 22 minutes of the session. Sure, yes, I'm still long uh, Intel from much higher prices. Not a huge uh, uh, huge part of my portfolio, but uh, definitely Intel perking up today. What the key to Intel today, we gave you that level. It did have a pair of highs at the 3875 area. We did mention it did get a running start into that. Worked its way into the 40 handle. For the first time since July of two of last year, so good day for Intel. Uh, boom, 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 AutoZone. There we go. A Z O AutoZone. How can I forget AutoZone? Uh, that's not having a good day either. Down forty three dollars and forty nine cents. You got got to be thinking if people are uh, not going to be buying new cars with the um uh with the strike on. Uh, that they might uh, have it to be fixing up their old cars, but uh, that's not uh, that's not the case here in the market. As you do have these uh, auto support auto auto parts uh, suppliers trading in the red. Uh, we do have some pockets of strength here. Berkshire Hathaway uh, trading up a buck ninety nine at three sixty seven fifty. That is a new old time high for Warren. He's got to be happy about that. Uh, we also mentioned, uh, uh, well, UNH is having a positive day. JP Morgan, as we mentioned, Johnson & Johnson 
also having a pretty good day. Uh, the stock that got a pop in the pre-market and uh, a struggle with 70 early in the morning, but finally busted through that level, uh, trading into the $70 handle at 70.92, so clearing an important uh, resistance level. Now getting into the gap, uh, perhaps the next target on the upside for CVS would be uh, the gap low on April 16th. That came in at 72.58. Uh, that gap was created uh, when uh, I believe, yeah, Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, uh, pulled out of their plan in California, I believe. So that's a look at um, uh, CVS. Uh, let's also take a look at Walgreens Boots Alliance. If you're looking at CVS, uh, undercut not well you got a pair of lows in the same area is it safe to step in the water i don't know 2139 multi-year low in yesterday's session 2149 uh the low in today's session kind of migrating back towards that area now the high of the session comes in i'm uh, uh, looking for a continued upside here uh 2224 and 2227 uh, or are the uh, a pair of highs in the uh, boom, boom in the Walgreens Boots Alliance here? Uh, let me just uh, double check here to see when uh, Mr. Fran Hertz is going to be joining us here. Perhaps he is getting busy here in the last few minutes of the session, but let me uh, keep going with some other stocks that we are finding here. Uh, uh change agent is uh mentioning uh copart is uh in the auto parts let's see if that's following uh suit with the rest of the stocks yes it is not looking too bad on the monthlies here actually pretty darn close to a uh all-time high uh that was made back a few months ago uh i think the key level you'd have to be looking at for this one comes in at the 44 dollar area you had a low at 43.89. Uh, that low was the low for last week, and that low was made on Thursday. You hit 44.16 today, but you're still pressing down on the lows of the session. So there you go. Uh, if you're looking for support to hold in uh, Copart, Copart Inc., uh, holding up much better than some of the other suppliers. Uh, BP fade. They lost their CEO. They came out, they hit it, and they hit it good from 39.60. Uh, so despite oil uh, being up strongly on the session, uh, not moving that way. Tons of resistance, tons of monthly resistance at the $40 area. And uh, multiple highs here on the monthly. Struggling to get there this month. Had a nice pop today. Off the oil news, but then uh, the CEO resigning was a little bit uh, too much for it. David Knowles is asking here about Exxon Mobil, uh, XOM, uh, having a good day. These were a little bit of a laggard this morning, but this uh, caught a bid uh, moving up towards the old time highs here. Really not much to see um, in the book on the dailies. The old time high for this was made just at the end of April, that comes in at 119.92. You posted your all-time closing high on that day too at 118.34. So there is a look at uh, Exxon Mobil. If you're looking at Exxon Mobil, you got to look at Chevron too. Chevron is having a good day. Uh, been a little bit of a laggard, but now picking up again. Uh, not what's interesting here about uh, CVX is you did not get to the pair of highs on uh, from uh, last week on Thursday and Friday. Uh, so while uh, the other issues are trading well above that, uh, it's not. So we shall see if uh, if CVX will wake up and uh, join the others. Uh, also, when you're looking at this, you got to look at OXY, OXY, Occidental Petroleum, uh, the old Warren stock uh, trading here up near 
uh, the highs from earlier in the month, which was uh, from last week. So on a relative uh, strength basis, it's perhaps still uh, has some room to go on the upside. 66.50 uh, was your high on September 6th. On the 5th, though, you made a high from last week at 66.90. Uh, due to close above that, at that level, uh, S&Ps are picking up here once again. Uh, we talked about that daily support at uh, 0875, standing at yesterday's low. Uh, and you are now six bucks above uh, that uh, uh, that intraday low at 07 and a quarter. It's just been kind of one of those choppy days, as uh, you can see uh, by the SPY here, uh, that we did make a low on the session uh, just heading into lunchtime. But that light volume lunchtime rally, that just uh, got it really close to unchanged as well here. Well, at 346 here, I am going to bring in Mr. Christian Fromhertz, who is uh, is uh, surveying this trading action along with me. And uh, I'm sure he has his seatbelt fastened for tomorrow's CPI and PPI number. Uh, but Christian has some uh, some stocks that, uh, you know, he always does this. He always comes and brings stocks that are, are not on everyone's radar, not on our radar, maybe not on Reddit radar, but certainly is on his radar. So he will be logging in with us shortly here as we head in uh, to that closing print. Uh, we are uh, well, uh, well, four handles off the low of the session. We'll see uh, if there's enough buying to keep us from that low. Of course, uh, we will have the all important CPI number in the morning. Stop to screen share, Mr. Christian from Hertz, founder and CEO of Tribeca Trade Group. <laughs> Good to see you, Christian. How you doing today? Hey, Joel. Yeah, just kind of watching the price action here with. Uh... Vic shooting up ahead of uh, the CPI report, and it looks like people are a little bit uh, anxious ahead of this uh, report for tomorrow. And uh, yeah, what else? It doesn't look like, um, you know, you mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, uh, I think when I was on the morning show, it's just kind of a lack of, of positive catalyst for now, right? Right, right. And uh, I think some trepidation over that CPI number that's supposed to be out at uh, 830. So uh, if you let your trading in the after hours of pre-market trying to square positions here. Um, I mean, if you look at the crude market, you're headed for the hills here. Um, as far as inflation data, of course, there's other factors that go into it. Um, crude having one heck of a one heck of a day. The energy sector, I will go uh, uh, unless you want to show your charts, Christian. Uh, crude getting up near 90 for the first time since the end of last year. An old natty gas uh, uh, perking its uh, head up here too. Uh, doesn't look great on the monthlies, but a daily perspective, that's a big move. What are you looking at in the energy sector? Yeah, uh, you can, and you can see my screen, right? Uh, it it's going over the there we go it's coming right, up good. what do you got right, for good. me <laughs> um so yeah i mean this is for me that you know the break into um the valuary for the year um this is on the weekly chart um above 8467 and notice that um we are now trending so we're in that like uh we're now uh being that we're in the valuary for the year um you could see and like this is a tough prediction to make and i don't like to make predictions in the first place but um you know according to like um how value areas are used um what this indicates is the bullish 80 percent rule um and this is something like i've been tweeting for the last couple of weeks you know essentially once we broke into the value area there's an 80 percent chance that we go all the way through now i i think that's really the case if it was the beginning of the year you know being that we're kind of at the sort of the tail end of the year it's going to be tough for that to be seen but um so i'm not expecting to move all the way to one 111 this year 
but I do know, I do know that the trend is up and, um, you know, again, there's, you know, I just kind of, um, what I've been experiencing in this market or just observing is there, there's not a lot of easy trades. You know, even if you look at XLE yesterday, um, the, because I've been, as crude goes up, I'm, I'm basically playing energy stocks, but even yesterday kind of gave you, um, you know, a difficult day because if you were in energy trades, you know, seeing, um, you know, things like Amazon and Tesla go up and a lot of the other software names and so forth. And meanwhile, XLE and energy stocks getting unwound yesterday, I thought was particularly tricky. Now, I don't know if it could be because of, um, you know, index rebalancing that happens on Friday, the S&P and NASDAQ um, have their quarterly rebalances on Friday. That's a that's a that's one of the witches that no no one ever talks about. Everybody's always like, oh, it's the option activity, it's options expiration. But really, I think it's more important that the S and P and Nasdaq are rebalancing again. Um, and they do this every quarter. It's not anything new, but. Um, there's a lot of assets that are that are um, that are tracking ETF, uh, you know, that are tracking, yeah, that are tracking ETFs, and uh, you know, all of those assets have to get rebalanced. So um, I think that could have been part of the sell-off yesterday in in um, in energy stocks. But um, what looks like, you know, it really looks like it was a buying opportunity. In high, little hindsight, 2020. <laughs> hindsight capital is always right. Hindsight uh, so, capital. Yeah. Yep. So there, there's a sector. It's just mm -hmm. been getting the daylights kicked out of it. And uh, it's finally having like, well, I'm looking at Array. You mentioned uh, yes, Array yep. Techers, you're looking, but uh, ENPH. I mean, it's always <laughs> nice to try and yeah. call turns here. And uh, uh, you mentioned uh, Array is something that caught your eye. And it, it looks like that is having a much better day. And it looks like that is held up a heck of a lot better. There's yeah. some of these uh, other solar stocks. What, what what do you like about um, a r r y array tech here in well, today's it's, session? It's just such an unloved sector, and you hit it. You hit the nail on the head. I mean, it's this, the solar stocks have just been. Um, like a, just a horrible area and that EMPH is a good, like I keep telling people like, <laughs> so I, that's why I chuckle because you, you brought that one up and I keep telling people like, you know, do not like play around with this like <laughs> for the, in the long side, because listen, I'm a trend trader and, and I only really stick to things that are, that are above the um the 200 day moving average but look at how many times this thing has gone down on earnings like that should tell you something gap down on earnings goes flat you know and by the way like this is what i always try to like um mention a, a lot of times when when a when a name has a bad quarter it's often dead money until the next quarter i agree uh, and because then you know institutions don't want to go after it until that they know that the company is turning the corner and starting to grow again and um, so we get to the next earnings quarter, you know, back on uh, back in July. I mean, and look at what it's done. So I, I know everybody has that. Um, uh, they they have the temptation that, oh, my God, the stock was at this price and the stock is now down to this. And that means to me, like in people's minds, it, they think about it in terms of like it's a better buy now because it was trading at three thirty nine. <laughs> it's not a bet. You know, you have to think about the road ahead. And obviously there's something going on with this company that it's not it's not executing well. And it's the same thing with Disney. All right, Disney to me is not a good buy down here. I know you guys talk about this name all the time, but it's it's not. It's a struggling like they're not executing well. And you know, my thought is some of these names eventually. And I know, like I said, you guys, I, I know that you talk about it on the morning show, but it's going to take years for this name to to come around, right? I, I mean we don't know that for certain. And, and this is a game of probabilities, but, you know, maybe there's a 10% chance that it has a V recovery, but more often than not names that break down like this, they go sideways for a couple of years, people forget about them and then they start to go higher again. It's just not how it's, you know, the fact that when names really break down, people associate, they're like, Oh, well, Disney said, you know, I know the name, right. It's a great brand name. And it is, you know, uh, you know, Dis Disney is an, is a name that's been around for a long time. Time and will continue to be around. But in terms of the stock, the stock looks like garbage. And I think any bounce, you sell it until it we breaks. got a great. Yeah, we got a great level. We gave that level all that support in 85, holding 85 in July and August. Finally broke down, came back and put a quad top in at 84.69. Today's rally takes it to 84.67 and then backs off backs off that area buck i know we got you a little bit late here i just want to yeah, talk to 
<laughs> there's nothing there's to worry about it. There's not yeah. many sectors that mm-hmm. are kind of looking good here. And you just uh, you just identified this private equity here uh, yeah. and uh, uh, black uh, Blackstone down 84 cents. But uh, yes, holding on to its gains. KKR. Uh, what where's the money? money's going into private equity here? Do you expect that to continue? Well, so, so I'm sorry, I didn't answer your question. Sometimes I go on these rambles. I apologize for the for. And by the way, so look at the difference between ARRY and the ENPH, like at least like this is what happens after a bigger downtrend. It's going sideways and it's trying to resolve itself after a long period of a base of trying to go higher. So, yeah, I think you can go long versus 2344 if you want some exposure to the solar group. Um, moving on to the um to the private equity space. I just like what's happening here in terms of, uh, you know, there's only so many names in private equity that that are big names. KKR is one of them. Blackstone, which got this big move, but it was already, Blackstone was already looking good before that they were announced that they were gonna be added to the S&P. They already started to kind of move a bit um, to the upside. And then the other one is, is um, well, there's two other ones, but look at Apollo is moving up. So um, I did, I, I went along some KKR today because I, I've actually been looking at this group for about two weeks um, right before the name, uh, you know, and, and again, like this is another situation, right? It has a nice decline, but it's been kind of going sideways and, and trying to resolve back into its uptrend. And, uh, you know, it is above the 200 day moving average, but, um, you know, CG is the one that's, a, that's the underperformer. So I stay away from the underperformer in the group, but um, I, I don't, to answer your question, sometimes we just, we don't know the exact reason. And I know everybody likes to play, including myself, stock detective, but I would just rather like something good is going on in the private equity companies. And I think it's, as long as you've got a stop price, you could try an idea right and then the stop price tells you where the um where the idea is going to go wrong okay all right a few minutes before the close here i'm going to let you go i don't want you getting stuck with anything oh thanks uh, appreciate that overnight and uh uh, thanks for coming on with josh last week and uh we'll be down you up again uh, next tuesday we could be looking at some different handles in the s and p's that's for sure uh with the big (laughs) inflation with the with the the big inflation data coming out as well as the quad witch expiration and don't forget the seasonality pattern of Sal Rosh Hashanah by Yum Kipper. Absolutely. So, the show goes right. on. The show all goes right. on, Joel. Love, had, love to have <laughs> you on, Christian. Uh, Take care. A li- yep. A little under three minutes to go here. We did help identify uh, a bottom for you, or at least on the daily basis here, unless we get the, some big old sellers coming in here in the final couple minutes. It looks like we are going to finish off the lows of the session. So that is, that's a good thing. Looks like we're going to be down again. Uh, once again, when I've been looking at the market here, the SPY and doing my daily wraps, it's just the market really just can't put a string together, a solid string. You did have a couple uh, good days. It seems like a couple good days, then a flat day, then a down day. Uh, so very, very, very hard uh, to um, establish uh, um, just a, a very consistent uh pattern in the market uh we are going to look at uh just uh one more stock i got a question on here uh and that was uh avgo uh we are bit uh, uh some traders investors have been trying to pick a bottom in here not sure what the oracle news did to that stock today uh but not much in here as far as solid levels go for right now you can lean on 841 841 66 was your low from yesterday uh going back to the low from last week was 840.52 so if uh market can hang in here a couple more days here maybe you have a bottom after a good, just kind of getting hit off a good report it just was uh this a little bit too much too fast people buying ahead of the report didn't get exactly what you wanted and you've had a couple days here of sustained selling uh just uh talked at length too about the auto part uh, about the auto companies we don't know when and uh, that strike what's going on with it but uh, Stellantis is having another good day uh GM is having a good day too so maybe some optimism uh about this uh deal getting done uh Ford having 
Um, a good day too for Ford. That's being up 24 cents. Uh, we're coming here into the final 15 seconds of the session. The uh, 8.30 will be the release of the Consumer Price Index. We will be on with Blue Putnam from the CME, Chief Economist at the CME at 8.15. He'll set us up uh, for that information, we are bouncing around like a ping pong ball. I'll just, uh, I'll say 45, 1350 as that closing price. That's down just under 27 handles on the session. So the bad news is we broke a two day winning streak. The good news is we got a pair of lows in the same area. We'll be keeping an eye on that overnight. Thanks for joining me on the closing print. Let's get fired up. Let's get some rest. Get ready for that CPI number tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m.